Howdy, howdy, guys. How we doing today? Barbecue Rockstar here. Kind of in between cold fronts today, guys. Uh, it's been uh, below freezing here for three days straight. Um, today, it's supposed to get up to like 58 for a high and then boop, back down again tomorrow through the weekend and into the first part of next week. It's supposed to be around freezing. Not too bad. Uh, so today, guys, I have a question for you. To bean or not to bean? That's the question. To bean or not to bean? When you're making Texas red, which is chili for all you non-indoctrinated types out there, and I'm talking about real chili, guys. Texas, I mean, if we had one like Texas 10 star, it would have to be chili and brisket, right? Do we put beans in our chili or do we not? We're here today, guys. We don't care. You want to put beans in your chili? Put beans in your chili. If you don't, don't. But today, guys, I'm going to, I'm going to give you a recipe that you just got to flat out try. Uh, we kicked it up a little gourmet style, as we tend to do here on this channel, um, with uh, nothing but premium products and a couple of surprises along the way. So if you want to kick your chili up to uh, the next level and keep your guests guessing as to what they're eating, um, with a pleasant surprise, well then stick around and watch the video guys because we are gonna kick it off here in three, two, one. Okay guys, uh, here is uh, a overview of a few of our ingredients. Guys, make note please of the Wick Fowler's Chili in a Box, right? You guys can laugh all you want, but let me tell you something. There's a reason why that is the number one selling chili kit across the country. Uh, they got it right. Their measurements are, are pretty spot on. You can use that as a platform in which to base your particular flavor profile off of. Uh, you'll see a few extra ingredients we're going to throw in along the way. So go get a snack, get a cold beverage, kick your feet up. And guys, please pay attention to this. Make notes if you want to. This is a recipe anybody could make. Just try it, just try it one time. If you don't watch or try any of my videos the whole year, try this one, guys. This is something special, stick around. Okay, guys, step one is I'm gonna take my proteins, uh, which is, in this case, my Angus ground beef. Okay, I'm going to, and I'm breaking it up in the pan, hot pan. Uh, I put in a little bit of avocado oil just to get this meat started and to help browning. I'm going to cover the bottom of this pan the best I can with the meat. And I'm just gonna let it sit there and brown. I'm going to try to get the most caramelization on that meat, bring out the sugars and the proteins. And then once we do that, we'll take that out. We'll transfer in our mild Italian sausage. We'll do the same with that. When that's done browning and cooking, we will go ahead and put that aside and we'll put in our aromatics to uh, deglaze the pan along with our, our cooking liquids uh, just to get our little soup going and uh, we'll go from there. Back in a minute. Now guys, depending on what you know about cooking and what you don't know, uh, a little a pro tip here guys, when you put your protein in, if you're looking for browning, don't go in there stirring, you know, like you think you're chefing it up because you're stirring it a whole bunch. You're delaying that caramelization the more you stir it. You want to keep that surface area, the hottest part of the pan, in contact with your protein for as long as you can, undisturbed, to create the maximum browning you can get. Brown food tastes better. Okay, I didn't write that. That was Ann Burrell. But guys, that's what we're going to do. We're going to let this sit undisturbed till we think it's almost burnt. Then we'll then stir it. Because guys, remember, this is going to simmer for a few hours. So you think the meat is overcooked. It's not. Trust me, you'll see in a minute. Of course, you do want to stir it enough so it doesn't stick overly to the bottom of your pan, but don't worry if it does. See all that water coming out of there, guys? Don't worry if it does stick a little bit, guys. Remember, we're going to deglaze, so we're not going to lose any of that beautiful goodness. Now, we're going to go back to letting it sit so it can brown up. Back in a minute. All right, guys, so we have browned off our pork and our ground beef, and guys, that is what we're left with. 
Oh man, that's gonna be a bitch to clean up. No, it ain't. Let me show you what I mean, guys. That is the most flavorful element of our entire dish. Now here, guys, I've got one red bell pepper cut up, and I've got one onion cut up, and about five, he uh, five cloves of garlic. I'm gonna go ahead and add that to our pot, okay? We're not gonna cook this very long, guys, and I'll show you why. Now, why we're doing this into this hot, hot, screaming hot pan, guys, we wanna coax out we coax out all the sugar that we can out of these beds just real quick without burning them. That garlic's in there. Remember, that garlic will burn. Oh, man, the smell of that garlic already, guys. Oh, man, are you kidding me? We're going to hit this little bit of avocado oil just so we really don't burn the whole dish. So. What we're doing is we're rubbing on that bottom, trying to get up as much of that fawn as we can. Guys, then we're gonna come in here with a little bit of our chicken stock. You can use beef stock, right? Beef stock would make more sense, but since we have our better than gourmet, better than bullion gourmet stuff, this will turn our stuff into beef stock inherently. So. Again, guys, we're scraping those bottoms, right? We're scraping all that goodness up, okay? That's gonna be our building block of this entire dish. More so than our pork or beef or any secret ingredients yet upcoming. This process right here, guys, cannot, cannot be skipped, okay? I mean, you don't have to do anything, guys. This is America. America, do whatever you want. If you wanna make chili, your friends will be like, dude, you need to open a chili parlor where I'm showing you how to do it. And guys, you can see at the bottom that dark. Let's see if you can see that there. I need to get better cameras. But you can see all that fawn has pretty much worked its way off the bottom there. Okay. Oh, my goodness gracious, guys. We're going to reduce this down just a little bit. Because, again, guys, it's not just how you say It's not what you say in life. It's how you say it. It's not what you cook in life, it's how you cook it, right? So this is an expression. This is an exclamation point in your chili right here, guys. Some people go, Dees, you kind of take your cooking a little personal, don't you? Yeah, I do. I really do, guys. It's also why I'm a pretty good cook, I guess, some people would say. I think I am. Pretty damn good cook, in fact. So what we're going to do now, guys, is we're going to add our beef and pork mixture back in there, okay? Because now all that protein and sugar that our beef has given us in that pan in, in the way of fawn, we wanna reinduce that, introduce those collagens and everything back in that meat, that protein. We wanna put that back in that meat. And this is the way to do it. This meat will soak up all of that goodness out of the bottom of the pot, which means those collagens, those proteins, those sugars. Um, it's it's just gonna make, guys, it's a building block you just cannot skip, seriously. I don't know what else to tell you. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to open up all of our cans, start dumping products in, guys, and this chili will start taking place. Stick around. All right, guys, we've got everything ripping and rolling here. Our meat now has soaked back up all of the collagen, the proteins, the sugars, and uh, some of the sugar from the onions and peppers now are starting to exude into our product. So we're gonna start adding our ingredients. This is the garlic and onion pack from the Wick Fowler's chili kit. Okay, we're gonna add that. This is our cumin and oregano pack and add every bit of that. I like the way they, oh, I just spilt half of them before. I like the way they measure out their stuff, guys. Paprika, which we're gonna add some smoked paprika to this. This is the sweet paprika here. And our chili powder, which is about, I'm gonna say that's at least a half a cup of chili powder, okay? They use pretty good chilies. They use Guajillo and uh, 
was the guajillo and ancho chilies for their for their chili uh, chili uh, powder. So it's pretty good chili good pretty good chili powder. Good God, I wish I could speak English. Now what we're going to do, guys, we're incorporating this into the meat. There's very little liquid in here, so again, that meat is looking to absorb anything it can get. Yes, it's going to absorb the flavors that we just put in there, guys. We are trying to impregnate that meat with this dry seasoning so that over slow cook, it's going to emit a little bit of that into our chill. Yeah, you'll just see. Stick around, guys. Okay, guys, here's a close-up of our meat that is uh, absorbing all of our dry seasonings. We're going to come in right now, guys, with our uh, salsa ranchera, okay? You see how dark that is, guys. And guys, I've had this stuff just on, on uh, you know, chips and stuff like that, tacos. This stuff is really good. If you ever find this in your store, buy it. Really, really good stuff. Okay, we've got some organic tomato sauce going in, whole can, and we're gonna fill that with water. Now nah, we won't, we'll use chicken stock and of course our Rotel tomatoes, guys, okay? Now, let's take our, I'm doing this one-handed, so please forgive the shoddy camera work here, guys. This can get messy, as you know. I'm gonna add one can of chicken stock. You can use water, guys. You could use beer, which if I had some good stout beer, like a Modelo Especial, I would use that, but I don't. So we're using just a can of water. Okay, now, this gives us kind of a good starting point to start making what looks like what will become our chili, our Texas red. Now this is gonna cook down. Now guys, we still have to add our better than bouillon. We're going to add our chipotles, our Worcestershire sauce, and our tomato paste. We're gonna add that at a later time, guys. Back in a minute. Guys, this is about a half a can of those uh, chilies and adobo sauce I was telling you about, okay? Uh, it's about a half a can. We're now gonna add that to our chili, stir that up, and we'll see you in just a minute. Thanks for watching. guys for one of those secret ingredients I was telling you about that's right guys this is what's left over of my Nicaraguan organic coffee that I drink we're gonna pour that in there too again guys flavor in flavor out and stir that in oh the complexities and the roundness um, guys, you just can't imagine what this smells like. <laughs> okay, now we're going to let this reduce down for a couple of hours. I'm sorry, for one hour. We'll come back. We'll check our color, okay? Um, and we will see where our sugars are. We'll taste it, and then we will uh, adjust our seasonings. Then we'll then put the lid on, and we'll let it go for another couple hours over very, very low temps. Stick around. Okay, guys, after simmering for about an hour um, on low, of course, uncovered, this is what we come up with. Now, I've tasted, you can see it's reduced by, you know, this much over here. It's reduced by about an inch. So I think we've uh, achieved the flavor we're looking for for now. But guys, we're going to put a lid on this. We're going to let it go another couple of hours with the lid on it. And we're going to add our next ingredient stick around so guys i promised you a, another secret ingredient and here we are guys i've got a half a slab of baby backs left over from what three days ago I, I smoked these on the weber three days ago i did not post the video i was going to but guys to be honest the wind was blowing so hard it was quite uh quite the disruptive video so what we're going to do guys we're going to take this half of baby back ribs off the bone and we're going to put that in our chili pot and stir that in so guys again i'm telling you 
whatever you put in your chili pot, you're going to get back out. So a little bit of planning and a little bit of uh, a forethought, you know, it's like, what do I want my chili to taste like? Well, guys, we're about to find out. Okay, guys, we've got our ribs in there. There was seven baby backs in there. I threw them in there, cut them off the bone, or basically, <laughs> damn it. I cut the ribs individual. I put them all in the chili pot, bone and all. Now, guys, they are smoked. They do have barbecue sauce on them. They are still on the bone. And, guys, here's the best part. There's a lot of flavor in those bones. That bone marrow is still coming out of there, guys. That bone marrow, once it's got some smoke on it, some caramelization, you might as well put that on your IRA, baby. That's worth more than gold. What I'm going to do is stir these in, guys. I'm going to let these go for about an hour. Ooh, I almost dropped my phone in the chili pot. I'm going to let these go for about an hour, okay, and uh, with the lid on, and then we'll come back and check them. Now, the meat will fall off the bone here without too much coaxing. They were already very tender. Um, and then we will retrieve the bones right before we plate up, which will be in just a minute. Guys, to get the maximum flavor out of any dish, you've got to reduce it down. Get rid of that excess water and just keep that flavor. Let it condition itself to itself. Condition itself. Let it condense itself. Guys, I promise I've not been drinking or smoking anything today, but I just can't talk. Plating is coming up soon. Guys, in our chili bowl over here, we've got some uh, tortillas, some white restaurant style corn tortilla chips. We just crack those up. That's gonna be in the bottom of our bowl. We are going to put in our chili. And then of course over here, guys, we've got our beautiful topping, which is gonna be uh, a nice little dice of yellow onion, yellow bell pepper, red bell pepper, and green jalapeno. We're gonna put that on top. Ooh, this is gonna be good. Stick around, baby. Okay, guys, our final reveal is finally here on our chili. This is our hog's breath chili. We're calling it hog's breath, guys, because as you saw, we do have ground sausage, mild Italian sausage in there, as well as a half a slab of baby back ribs and our chili Angus beef as well. So, guys, thanks so much for sticking around. We appreciate you supporting us here. Hit that like and subscribe if you haven't already. Guys, we're hovering around 650 subs. Guys, I'm giving you my absolute best. I'm digging deep here. I'm giving you my best recipes, giving you my best secrets. Please try this recipe. Uh, look, I know everybody's got a million different ways to make their chili, guys, but if you'll just try this recipe, this is not your average bowl of chili. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.